Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. I have another video here. This time working on a marine computer. This is an 8.1 GXIE-FF. Uh, this is for Chris uh, Whitstock. Uh, I hope that I'm saying your last name good. Uh, this is your computer here. I'm have it connected. It says DTS Marine or DJ, DJ's Marine. Uh, can send me this. It says something about pin 50 or pin 20. That was uh, ground signal at ILO when it should be no ground at all until throttle level is position or pull. This circuit controls throttle bomb and throttle body. I am actually <coughs> working on here. I want to show you this. Actually, pin 20 and pin 50, as you can see here, is a sensor ground. And it goes once, goes to the, uh, and then the pin 50, which you can also see here, sorry, it's backwards, is also a sensor ground. If I go over to the wire diagram, I want you to see that I have also the two fiber reference. Again, one is for the uh, throttle positions and the other one is for the throttle actuator. They're both a green fiber reference is perfect in there. I have the computer running right now. I do not have your throttle actuator in control arm. So if I need to uh, test further, Realistically, for what I have here, I think the problem might be in the boat and not here. Uh, I want to show you. I have the values. The computer is running good. This is our all injectors. They're all injecting 2.7 at idle with the values that I am actually giving to the computer, which is what we have here. That's most important, and that is throttle position, and then a map, massive flow sensor. Um, in this case, I'm providing around. Um, 6.1 psi that you can see right here i can actually zoom into that and you can see those values better let me put those here so we can see it from the distance but you can see that i have uh tcp oh i guess sometimes it does that keeps doing it come on I'm trying to grab it not to make it a small let me just also grab the tps actual and put those in here and we can grab the rpm as well but yeah as you can see those values are here um let me see if i have injector milliseconds and i do so we can put that ones in here so you can see that the computer is running <clears throat> i got no no problems the only thing that i do have is since i don't have the um whole setup for the again control arm and um in the throttle actuator is I'm getting, you know, TCP higher than IBS. And IBS is a switch that is on the actual um, control arm, let's say, you know, the accelerator for the boat. And uh, that switch has to be uh, low when or high, depending on the position of the control, control arm. I can show you another video when I'm actually doing the full test of this setup. But what I wanted to show you is the wire diagram. So give me one second to pull the wire diagram. All right, I pulled the manual from Volvo Penta. This is the latest uh, manual. As you can see, it's well, edition 2015, which is the latest for this. Uh, let me show you first. Uh, this is for, again, TCP 1 and 2 simultaneous voltages out of range. Uh, I have to get with him. I got to look into this uh, FMI 16 TCP because this is why he's putting in here, you know, FMI 116 TCP 1 throttle position sensor data bus that uh, sensor valid data but above normal operational range tcp2 so <clears throat> again what we have here and this is again the manual uh, again the, the diagram properly pin 50 as you can see a sensor ground that has to be always be it has to be always a sensor ground Powers and grounds will never change. Same thing as voltage reference once and voltage reference two. If we have, you know, there is a, a another voltage reference on pin 19 that is uh, used for TCP one and TCP two. Oh, sorry, in IBS you have a five volt reference, a uh, five volts for sorry for the IBS. There is actually two different. Um, let me see if I go back to a couple of pages in here because this is again 
Uh, if we go TPS 1 and 2, we got also fiber reference again in 19. This is, again, if we see what we have here on my connections, you see I got the fiber reference 19. And then the other fiber reference that I am using to test is pin 49, which is also what we have in there as well. You see pin 49, so these are the two fiber reference and then the two sensor grounds, pin 20 and pin um, 50. So if we see here, pin 20, it says fiber return, that's actually the sensor ground. Then we have the fiber reference that comes on pin 19. And then, yes, 19. So 19 supplies power to the sensors. Uh, we got a sensor ground and then the two signals for the TPS1 and TPS2 on pin 39 and pin 40. If I go, and this is the motor actuator on the throttle, on the throttle body. Um, if I go back, there is also another diagram it shows uh, because again we have to make sure that we're using the correct one so let me just go back a little bit uh, might not be that easy to find that's right here okay so in tcp um in this case i have to actually see what this says so let me just reduce this one second this is for dtc 0563 and that is for SPN 1080. And that is very important because depending on the SPN, it applies to your engine or not. And that's what I can see here because in here we got, you know, 19 again as a fiber reference and then 20 as the fiber return. And we have another five volts and pin 76. And that is for TCP2. So I have to really check uh, on your system to make sure if we have another fiber reference that is separate because uh, going into what I have for your uh, boat, let me just get into your folder, 5.1 right here, uh, TCP, based on the serial, and this is again very important based on the uh, FM SPN 91, and we can see that here, let's see, let's see referring SPN 91, that's very important, and SPN right here, 91. So this should be the setup for your boat. I am then using the correct uh, voltage reference, 19 and 49, you see right here. So these are the two voltage reference, and then we have two uh, sensor grounds, which is in 50 and in 20. So let me go, this is page um, 216, so let me go back to the manual to 16 page to 16 so we are indeed using uh, come on let me go down to 216 and that's a connector for the actual uh, actuators which i will save as well but yeah so we have in here 19 and 49 which is again the full the fiber reference that i have in here uh, 19 and 49 and then pin 20 and pin 50 so 49 and 19 are five volt reference the two sensor grounds we are reading five volts and that's not changing so the only thing that i'm not able to check obviously because i don't have it here is your throttle actuator or your um, uh, control arm which is where the tcp one and two are um, Oh, they leave and also the IBS because the IBS is just a switch but it has a resistor in place that it will change resistance and it will pull these five volts down through a resistor and that will change the voltage and then the control arm will send a signal back again and, and make sure that everything is agreeing for the codes that he's getting we either have a problem on the harness on the boat or on the control arm, throttle actuator, something is pulling too much. If you want, you can send everything to me. I can connect everything together and do a full test with your control arm and throttle uh, body here. Let me find that video so you can see what I can do. Give me one second. All right, Chris, I found a video I want to share with you. I can also, if you want to send you the link. All right, so this is an, an April one. Let me just, uh, where's the sound on here? Come on. 
This is for another Marina, Nichols Marine. And this is a, a Mercruiser 496, so it's a different one, but it's the same, same computer. <clears throat> so sorry. But as you can see, I had the actuator connected to the computer and also the control arm or actuator, throttle actuator, which is right here. Uh, let me forward the video a little more. Let me just make sure right here. All right, so this actuator was actually giving issues too, and it was not the throttle body because the throttle body, as you can see, is pretty much new in here. Um, and it was actually giving, I think it's the same full code that you're getting. Uh, we can see that, you know, let me actually go back a little bit on the video. Sorry, I'm going back and forth, but as you can see, it's moving and it closes. And that's, that should go slowly open from zero to maximum if everything is, again, working good. So yeah, the throttle lever, control arm, uh, different manufacturer has different name for that, but it's again, it's just, it's just a throttle actuator arm. There is actually a drive-by-wire test. Let me see if actually Volvo Penta, we can get that to to run, because I'm actually a little curious to see that, because all I gotta do is go into test. We gotta clean the compression. Yep, the, the drive-by-wire test is in here, so. Uh, this test should be performed with the key on and engine off. Obviously, I cannot do this because I don't have the actuator again, but I will be able to do the same test you're going to see there if you send me everything here. Like that, I will be able to narrow down. I posted this video a year ago. Actually, it's, it's, it's private. I'm going to release it so you can see it properly. Uh, but yeah, so it's in 4K, so perfect for this test that I'm actually doing in yours. See, this is very important, the IBS voltage and the IBS state. That's also why you can check in your boat if you use Diacom. You see that those values has to be, you see when it's working good, now the total value is working good. Mm -hmm. See, if I go slow in his case, obviously, if I go slow in the lever, everything is beautiful. The throttle body opens 100% and then it goes to minimum. But if I move it quickly, like, you know, you will do. I mean, you're in the boat, you want to accelerate right away, right? It, it goes and tries to open it and then closes, as you saw in the first part of this video. And that's when fault codes happen. But yeah, on the setup and on the wiring, everything, all this... Uh, uh, values are perfect as far as sensor ground, fiber reference for those actuators to work. So I'm going to release this video. Just look for, I will send you the link so you can find it easy. So you can uh, show this to Ken and then he can do this test in there if you want. Or if you, again, if you want to send me the throttle body and the throttle actuator uh, lever, and then I can check everything and record a full video doing that test. Obviously that's a separate charge. And, um, we go from there but your computer has everything to work properly i don't see nothing wrong with it um it's been running poor uh, let me see if i have the values of that right now but i will say probably at least an hour um i have to connect again because i have to disconnect to, to see if that test runs or not i have right now 920.66 hours and that's it. It doesn't tell me how long it's been running. But yeah, I would say probably at least uh, 40 minutes. It starts and runs every single time. I can, you know, turn it off, turn the computer, everything off. I will lose communication, as you can see there. I turn it back on. Fuel pump is doing the prime, which is perfect. That's what it should do all the time. And then run. And it runs perfect every single time. Come on. All right, so yeah, we have injectors. We got uh, fiber reference, both immediately active and working good. So 
nothing wrong with the computer all right chris and ken i will be sending this your way sharing the other videos so you can watch more i think i have like two or three videos doing that kind of test and i can show you how it needs to be done uh definitely for this kind of uh, readings i would recommend to use an oscilloscope uh, if i connect an oscilloscope to the swip or the tps on the throttle body and then to the swip on the tcps on the throttle actuator lever i can see if there's any glitches you can probably see that with a multimeter uh, if you connect that onto the signals again going back to the uh, wiring if we go over to the tcps i'm trying to do too many things at the same time so let me make this a little bigger come on <laughs> all right so if you are in the signals which in this case will be pin 10 and then pin 9 again tcp1 and tcp2 then you will be able to see the drops you can also use a multimeter to see if i would recommend to use a, yeah, one of these two brands are really good again if you have a on the oscilloscope it's a graphing multimeter a, a fast graphing multimeter then you can catch any glitches because that's exactly what happens when you're accelerating if you want those signals drops it will create a glitch and it will put them the the motor in default and it will not let you accelerate it will just go into limb mode which is pretty much what i think you guys are experiencing but um everything in the computer is good all right so I'll try to help as much as i can so i'm going to share those other two videos and then you can uh, take your decision as far as what you want to do if you want to send me the parts and test it here condemn what it needs to be condemned because i mean it might be hiring a uh, wiring harness or something else um for the rest that are watching this video thank you so much for visiting the channel don't forget to subscribe 